This is Twit. This is the top story, and yet, sadly, I cannot rejoice with you all because I have no idea. Oh, wait. No, yeah, I have no idea what I did with my Pixel. <laughs> I tried to look behind me to see if it was over here, but it's not over here behind me. Um, anyway, Android 11 is official today, just like just like that. Maybe you were on Twitter and you saw Sundar Pichai tweeted, hey, everybody, Android 11 is out. So it's launched today. It's going to be available for Pixel phones, as I mentioned, as well as select phones from OnePlus, Xiaomi, Oppo, and Realme all on day one. Um, now, I got to ask, Ron, have you seen anything on your OnePlus? Because I haven't seen anything on mine. Hang on. Let me check. Okay. Uh, 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 no, I'm still on Android 10. Okay. Dang it. Just, yeah. I've been checking um, all day. I let me tell you. S- still owe an update from like a month and a half ago or something. I don't know. Um, I'm not a good sure example you know. for other people. Checking for, checking for update. Your device is up to date. Android 10. Dang it. Uh, Dang yeah, it. No luck. One of these days. Maybe tomorrow. One of these days. Maybe tomorrow. Yeah. Maybe tomorrow. Um, some features to look forward to in Android 11, or as Jason likes to refer to it, Android double hockey sticks. And we don't mean the other thing that spells no, 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 that no, no, spell no. double hockey sticks. Although if you're in California right now, it might feel like that. Uh, some features <laughs> include in Android 11 conversations, which lets you prioritize certain notifications over others and uh, certain groups of messages, as well as bubbles, which you've seen pop up maybe through Facebook Messenger. There's also screen recording and new smart home media controls that are embedded right into the lock screen uh, as well. Excuse me, not lock screen, the little screen, the power menu, the power menu. Um, And there are also media controls in the notification shade, a new wireless Android auto, one-time permissions for your favorite apps to make it easier for them to launch and easier to know when you need to check on those permissions. There's also, oh, Again, I jumped ahead. I meant those auto reset p- permissions. Those are the ones that will come through and say, hey, remember this app? You might want to revoke location access. And like we have talked with the Android developers, there's some new mainline project mainline modules that have been included in Android 11. So that means more fast tracked updates without having to wait for the whole OS to update itself. Uh, Pixels will get some special features. So if you have a Pixel, you will have access to find friends in the live view within Google Maps. So kind of like the find my friends uh, feature that's been on iPhones for so long. Also smart reply in Gboard for chat apps. Uh, all of that is will be on all on device. You won't have to worry about any processing happening off screen or I guess in the cloud. Also, there will be more AI and behavior-driven app suggestions on the home screen. You might have remembered when we previewed this in the Android 11 beta on the Pixel. Basically, it's a dynamic dock. It changes throughout the day and as your usage changes on your phone. And you might be surprised at how pretty accurate it can be throughout the day. So... Serving you other three here, you all know my answer. I'm a little delayed on updating right now. How are you guys feeling for Android 11? Will you upgrade immediately or will you wait a bit? Uh, Let's start with you, Duncan. I am curious to hear about your stance on this. So I woke up this morning in Australia to Jason's tweet saying that he'd got the the update, spammed the update button, and had it installed within about 15 minutes. So I was jumping straight on board. Nice and fast. I, uh, I uh, I didn't do any of the betas, so I'd been waiting for this day for quite some time. Um, so I, uh, I was very much looking forward to it. I've only had a, a little while to play with it, but I think my top three, three favorite features in order is the power menu. That is absolutely fantastic. And especially for home control, I've got a lot of home automation. And so that's made using that really simple. Next would be the, um, media notification, having a consistent, rich UI for controlling that is fantastic. And I'm excited by the idea of the conversations notification, not the bubble, so much. I'm not convinced by that, but the conversation grouping. Mm -hmm. Uh, And there's some other really nice features in there as well. But no, straight on board, no problem so far. And for those who update using Google Pay and wondering if it's going to break it, so far it hasn't. Google Play seems very friable when you update. That's Hmm. good. Um, Jason, what about you? You're the only other one here with uh, a Pixel. (laughs) <laughs> or a couple of pixels, actually. Like I saw yeah. the news and I, oh, wait. And I pulled Ron out my pixel. 
Well, yeah. Way so to steal you, my you, thunder. Jeez. Oh, Flo. sorry, Ron. <laughs> I was waiting for my turn. I had a whole bit lined up. <sighs> Ron, why well, don't you on, go? It's your turn I now, a, and I ruined. Spoiler alert. I, I am on the OnePlus 7 Pro, and normally I wait until the official, you know, kind of until I get the notification to install it and do the whole rollout. And I will do that when it hits my OnePlus or whenever I get my new Pixel 4a, whichever comes first. Uh, I ordered the Pixel 4a, 4a last week on a, on a whim as a, it's time for a change. I've had this – the I've been on OnePlus for the last at least a year plus or so. Um, and I was like, let me go over the Pixel now with a low price – with a mid let – me, let me walk the walk and get the mid-range, pri- uh, mid-range price phone. Um, and so it's not supposed to ship until October. So I might get it. I might get Android 11 on OnePlus 7 before I get the Pixel 4a. But either way, I'll get there eventually. So – I think you're going to get it on your OnePlus within the next day or two. I mean, yeah, basically cause, cause OnePlus, OnePlus is, a, is, a, is a day one, right? Yeah. Yeah, they're a, they're a day one, but they're obviously behind what the Pixel update was. This morning I woke up, I saw the news, I pulled out my Pixel 4 XL, which is on the, the beta track, and it didn't catch an update. Then I was like, oh, I know I have a 2 XL around here somewhere, and it's not on the beta. I pulled that out. It updated immediately. And then the next time I tried, like two minutes later on my XL, my 4 XL, uh, the update came through. And so it was like, all right, all the pixels are moving over. I have a one. How do I have so many phones? I have a OnePlus 8 Pro uh, <laughs> that I also tried the update on throughout the day, and it still hasn't updated. But yeah, OnePlus, select OnePlus phones, select Xiaomi, Oppo, and Realme devices all on day one. So from an update standpoint, like day one updates, this, that's actually pretty, um, pretty impressive. Uh, a nice broad suite of devices that are in there right at the beginning. Of course, it's not like Sam a Samsung. That would be huge if Samsung said, hey, our top devices are getting day one updates. I don't know when or if we'll ever see that, but hmm. um, still still pretty awesome that uh, uh, more than just Google's own phones are getting this on day one or supposedly anyways. But, but, but guys, yeah. Samsung promised three years of updates. Come on now. It's got to come hey. someday soon. I'm they didn't, not, I'm not they didn't say what they would be updating. They didn't say they'd be updating <laughs> to the latest. There's three years of updates. That's it. So, well, they said three major OS updates. I know, so at some <laughs> point they'll get there. We'll find out when. But, um, but yeah, I mean, as far as as far as like the the update is concerned, like I've already you know talked a lot uh, uh, here as well as hands on Android on the different betas and developer previews. This is of course the uh, the power menu that Duncan that you were talking about. This is probably my favorite feature on on the new update entirely because it integrates so much. You've got all of your power controls at the top. You've got your Google Pay. Uh, in the middle. And if I had multiple cards, I could swipe between them. I really only use one right now. Uh, and then you've got a customizable smart, you know, smart home control area that is just as easy to pull up as anything. You just hold down the power button and you have it. And it makes all that really, really nice. And then of course, uh, here, let me unlock it. Uh, sorry. There we go. Uh, we got the expanded media controls down here. If I had multiple um, multiple apps playing different things. I could play it here. I could swipe between them, exit out, and make it disappear. I can, I can select different devices in my house to send that audio to. So I could send it to the kitchen if I wanted to, uh, very easily. And then uh, Duncan, I think the other thing you were talking about was the conversations view, which is another big aspect to Android 11, right? Like we've got this top area that is isolated to just. Uh, messaging and conversation apps, they all get kind of filtered into this into this space. So you're not searching through all of your notifications to find those conversations. They're all located up there. And then within there, you can take one person and change how it appears. So right now, the, you know, Burke is silent. Sorry, Burke. If I wanted him <laughs> to be a priority, I could tap that. Then when his messages come through, his what? avatar will show up. Yeah. Okay, from now on, you're going to be priority. Okay, Burke, you're a priority to me. <laughs> Your avatar will appear up in my notifications. Uh, I can select to get a pop-out bubble, which, you know, for whatever, we've seen bubbles on Android for a long time, but it is kind of interesting what bubbles does in the in the sense that it really kind of breaks out these multiple apps into a single delivery mechanism. So the app matters less, right? Because they're all just kind of 
messages coming into this block. It doesn't matter what app they're coming from. So that's I, I think that's a, that's a great approach. Um, definitely better than Google's previous plan, which is let's make one chat app to rule them all. And you're going to lose when you do that, Google, obviously, time and time again. So maybe this is the better approach. So we'll go ahead and accept that Burke is a priority contact now and apply that. There you go, Burke. Your priority to me. Oh, and things are crashing. Hey, you know, and there we go. We got the little bubble uh, popping up. And everything, hey, so. things are crashing. Welcome to this new operating system. Yeah, but it's not everyone. showing you the new message I just sent you. <laughs> Did you just send me a new message? Whatever, he says down at the bottom there. All right. Um, thank you for that. Uh, but yeah, I, you know, it's not, it's not an update that's, that you're going to get like someone pre prior to the show was asking like, is this an update that I should be wary of updating on my grandpa's phone? Let's say, because sometimes these updates happen, yes. right? And my wife has gone through this where an update will happen. She reboots and then it comes up and she's like, what happened to my phone? Like nothing is where it used to be. I don't know how to control it anymore. And this isn't the kind of um, OS update that's going to do that to you. Everything is pretty firmly where it used to be. There's just new kind of things tucked away. And um, in many cases, they're they're meaningful. Um, but it's kind of lacks a little oomph, I, I would say, from a from a kind of like a whiz bang uh, perspective, if that makes sense. Doesn't everything lack a little bit of oomph this year? <laughs> Fair. Sure. Fair. It just feels like a hashtag big mood. I'm just saying. I feel like we're going to say yeah. a lot of that to come like December at the end of the year. But, you know. Yeah. One thing we're, that we should uh, take a, a What, Duncan? We're also in a phase of iteration, not innovation, I think. And so mm -hmm. what we're seeing is refinement and, you know, an improvement to this system and improvement to that system. I can't overestimate or overstate the uh, home controls moving into that power button for no other reason than the home app is a fireball of slowness. Um, if anyone yes. here has ever tried to load the app to control something, it, it is not swift. You know, it doesn't matter what phone you load it on. And so being able to put those controls in that power menu, you have almost instant access to something finally. And I was playing with it this morning and it works. It's swift. I was worried that you'd end up with the same lag inside that menu, but you don't seem to. So, you know, it is iteration, but it's iteration in a way that is actually meaningfully increasing, improving the user experience. Mm -hmm. uh, and so, you know, that's to be celebrated, albeit incremental. Yeah. Yeah, I, mean, I agree. It's, it's just it's it's a definitely it's a, it's a slower roll of things to celebrate versus the big major update like we saw, you know, as these releases got have gotten to be like yearly at this point, it's it has to be iteration because anything major takes too long to do, right? And so, you know, I, I totally agree. I think the more refinement they do and the the more fine tuning the way the machine the 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 machines work better with the OS um, can hopefully lead to the next phase of innovation, whatever that is. Um, maybe it's foldables, maybe it's transparent phones, maybe it's other a new kind of paradigm of, mm. of device. But the uh, the software has got to get to the point where it's like, okay, we need to we need to expand from what this does now to do something different. So uh, yeah, it's yeah. got you got to make this progress. 